Uh, yep. All right, cool. Thanks. I'll uh, try and keep it a little bit speedy, I suppose. So that's, that's good. I was worried I was going to be too short. So and this works out perfect, actually. Um, cool. Yes. So uh, yeah, my presentation um, is around uh, yeah, Dosa and, and, uh, and Lando. Um, uh, yeah, you can see some icons there. We'll get, get straight to it. Um, cool. All right. So what is um, WSL? Um, so WSL is like an integrated, uh, virtualized, uh, developer-oriented Linux environment. Um, and I put the two in brackets because uh, it's the newest and greatest version. It's one everyone should use. Um, I don't actually know why you'd use number one, but uh, anyway, two is where it's at. Um, why should you consider WSL? So I haven't put much text on the screen, but basically uh, if you're locked into Windows, you can still use some like aspects of Linux um, and it makes it everything like super fast when you're running uh, your Docker containers uh, compared to just um, like Docker containers directly with your like your project files, your Drupal files on your Windows file system. Um, if you run them in your, your WSL, your Linux uh, container with your conta um, container files. So it's a bit confusing because the, the WSL is also containerized. Um, in your Linux uh, operating system, and then your, uh, the container file containers are also Linux file system, uh, you get increased uh, speed. Um, and also you get your dev tools. So you can use your grep and you know, cat and whatever uh, in your thing rather than using like git bash um, like kind of uh, programs. Uh, and, and you could also like, you know, install every container, but that's kind of annoying. Uh, so, so just comparing like the two, so when you install Docker, there's like two different backends that you can use. Um, so the default is WSL, but a while ago it was um, Hyper-V backend. And um, why is this, don't, don't move. Uh, <laughs> yeah, um, so, so yeah, so comparing the two. Uh, so these are like the pros of WSL. Uh, so it's like starts really quickly compared to the Hyper-V um, backend. So, um, so apparently it can start in like two seconds. It doesn't start in two seconds on my computer, but apparently if you've got the right setup, it's like super quick for the Docker daemon to, to start. Um, and then uh, your yeah, fastest of access, as I said earlier. Um, the resources uh, is, has, when you run Docker within your, um, like with the WSL backend and your WSL container, um, like operating system, it has access to like more memory. It can like kind of share it with like Windows. Whereas with the Hyper-V, it's like more concrete. It's like, okay, eight, eight uh, gig and that's it. Like you can't do, do any more or something. Um, but uh, yeah, you can, um, with the WSL, it can expand and go, I think it's up to like 85% by default, but you can, you can configure it obviously. Um, yeah, but if it's not using that much, then Windows can like use like the remainder. So it's like great. Um, it's, uh, yeah, tools, as I said before, home edition. Um, I don't know if anyone's home, home edition, Windows 10 home edition at home, but first option um, if you want to run Docker at home. Uh, compared to, um, like, Hyper-V, you traditionally need, like, the Pro Edition or Enterprise Edition of Windows. Uh, there are some cons with it, uh, so just being, like, transparent. Um, so if you're, like, for some reason, you didn't copy your files, like, into the Linux container, and you're like, oh, I'm going to, like, use WSL, but actually just have your files still on Windows. Um, it's like super slow. Uh, so <laughs> don't do that. Put them inside the, your, your Linux uh, environment. Um, it's, uh, yeah, so if you get that file speed, like your file system access speed, so it doesn't have to like translate the like file systems as it like um, with your mounting. So like with your project and then the, um, like the, the Apache or Nginx or whatever web server that's inside your container um, doesn't have to like work across that. Um, if you only got like a couple files, like it's okay, but probably not. Um, and then, which I'll go into the next slide on that one. Uh, to edit files inside the WSL, it's not like it's not in Windows, right? So you can't just like, oh, I'm gonna open like Notepad. Uh, you need to use some like WSL software um, or you can use Notepad, but it's a bit slow. Um, well, one file is probably okay, but to browse all your files, like you do some search, you're like waiting like 10 minutes to like find your, your file. So you probably, yeah, you should use some WSL native program so it doesn't cross that file system boundary. Um, so yeah, you're like limited, limited with like not all programs like WSL enabled yet. Um, especially like Sublime Text Editor, which I really like to use, but it doesn't, it's not WSL enabled, it's so annoying, <laughs> it's so sad. <laughs> uh, yeah, so after like convert to Visual Studio Code. Um, and uh, there is some capacity to do like window programs, like kind of natively, but it's not really uh, like, a, there yeah, I guess it's a brand new feature. I think it's like six months old or something like that. Um, I do have like example coming up around how you can run Sublime, like. In, Win, in Linux, but uh, I haven't really tested it, so um, it's a bit of a, you know, it's there, but it might not work that great. Um, there also are some memory bugs. Uh, it's generally okay, I think, in my experience, 
But uh, apparently, Ubuntu uses like a lot of memory and doesn't release it back to Windows. Kind of annoying. Uh, <laughs> so you have to restart it occasionally. Uh, but it's generally generally fine, um, pretty much. Uh, so what's good or ish or what's okay? Or what's what's some notes about Hyper-V backend if you're using um, the, the yeah, for Docker? So yeah, if you've got like only a small amount of files, so you've got like a SaaS project and you like already installed Docker using Hyper-V, it's like okay, like it kind of works. I got some like metrics like later on. Um, it's like, it works all right, but then, yeah, only for like small. So the SAS is just like your config and your themes, like not too many files. Uh, you do see in the notes that if you've got like complex site, you've got like a lot of config, you're like waiting to like export a config and you're like, I'm waiting, I'm waiting, it's like, like a minute or two. Uh, but it's like small site, it's like not too bad. Um, so that's kind of why you might use Hyper-V. But then again, like, yeah, if you, that's only for SAS, right? If you're using PaaS or some like stock project, it's like lots of files, it's super slow, it's terrible, don't use it. Um, but if you just, very small case, it's okay. Um, there are some like networking issues as you can see here. Um, they work a bit differently, like Hyper-V compared to every cell. Uh, your enterprise works like a bit differently with it. Um, I personally would just co configure enterprise properly um, rather than try and like switch between Hyper-V or WSL, but that's something to note. Um, yeah, and uh, apparently, according to, to ChatVD, um, apparently, <laughs> I couldn't, like, I Googled it, and I was like, why would you use Hyper-V? When would you use Hyper-V? And it, like, came up with some response, but uh, I clicked the, the sources and the websites weren't really that helpful. But apparently, uh, if you're using Windows containers, it's uh, better to use Hyper-V um, backend compared to Linux um, for your, like, your hard drive disk usage and stuff. But if you're using, like, CPU, apparently, WSL is better. Um, anyway, basically, you should use WSL and not Hyper-V, but that's just some, some notes um, around it. Uh, so the metrics, yes. So as you can see uh, on the screen, uh, Gaussian SAS is like pretty similar, not too bad for like just clear the cache on, on, a, um, on a SAS site. So it's okay. Um, but yeah, you really notice the difference when you're using Lender. So when you've got your whole, whole project or your like, composer files, it's like much, much faster, nine, uh, nine times faster on my, on my computer. Um, inside a, a Windows virtual machine, because not natively, because antivirus problems. Um, also, because it's um, lo like great with lots of files, your NPM um, and Yarn also will see um, a decent increase if you want to run that inside your container as well. Um, so just going to go through some like notes, kind of like, like mini intro to like WSL. Um, and uh, yeah, and then I'll go a little bit over like Lando as well. You guys are probably are experts because like there's already been a presentation on it, but this is just like how to install it in WSL. Um, so you basically like execute your command. So as long as you've got like the latest version, the latest and greatest of Windows, you just do your, like your, win, your WSL dash s install from your um, command prompt. Um, make sure your, um, you've got the WSL based engine is like ticked. So if you like installed your Docker beforehand, then it might not have um, set that as default. So you, like make sure it's ticked and then it'll um, transfer between the Hyper-V um, machine that it runs and then the, the WSL kind of machine, but it's like a containerized machine. Um, so you do lose your containers when you switch. Um, like they're still there if you switch back, but like initially they'll be empty. Um, yeah, and you probably want like, um, well, that's also unticked. Anyway, um, yeah, for Lando and things, um, you can't have the Docker Compose um, too, and also for Gaussian as well. Uh, and yeah, so just go set like the settings to so make sure like, it should be like by default, but yeah, if you're like switching, make sure you've um, got the like integration uh, settings um, in Ubuntu like, um, set so when you run your Ubuntu, so that's your WSL, that the Docker client um, talks to the Docker um, uh, like backend, like the, um, the the thing. So um, so when you have your Docker like that, your WSL links can talk to the Docker backend, and also your Docker in Windows can talk to the backend. So you, you install Docker in Windows, but it runs like a um, a machine in WSL, which um, Ubuntu can talk to. Uh, and there's some like settings down there. Uh, if you're, um, like if it installs version one for some reason of WSL. Uh, cool, all right. Um, so how to install Lando. So some like technical um, commands here, but uh, essentially, yeah, you want to like install Lando inside your WSL, inside your Linux container. Um, it's, uh, it is hard coded to like depend on Docker because Docker is like technically not really installed in the Ubuntu, in the Linux. Um, you got to like add the flag to like ignore the Docker dependency. And then when you do your um, like your app get updates, uh, it will still like know that it was dependent on Docker. So you got to like edit uh, this file to like remove it. So when you do your, 
your installs of other um, software that it uh, doesn't, um, you know, try and, um, uh, that's just, I typed, anyway, the cross is supposed to say Docker, I typed that wrong. I just it's a bit of a rush job. But you delete Docker from the Lando, um, like the database file thing. Um, cool. And uh, yeah, the, um, I put Nano there, but you can use whatever text file editor you want to use to edit the file. As long as you run sudo, that's the key thing. Um, cool. Uh, so next, um, yes, yeah, so I had edit your files. So as I said before, um, if you're editing directly on Windows, it's like this slow. Uh, there is a uh, like Win install WSL, this little like um, Linux uh, icon that's like in your sidebar, in your Windows File Explorer. So you can edit like your Ubuntu and stuff directly there, but it's a bit slow. But if you just like copy and paste a few files, it's all right. But um, yeah, for your, your Windows programs, it's like a bit slow. So yeah, you probably want to use like a program with like WSL extension um, or some native uh, program. Um, so yeah, so just initially get your project files on there. You just like want to get clone like inside your, uh, your Ubuntu. So I've got like home folder there, but you can use whatever you want. Um, I'm pretty sure home folder is like automatically mapped in, in Lando. So that's kind of nice as well. Um, so you can access like all your projects at once. Um, yeah, and uh, that's the that little like um, terminal is the like the WSL terminal inside like your Windows computer. Um, yep. Uh, so uh, this is an example of how to do your editing with um, Visual Studio Code. So VS Code um, abbreviated. Uh, so you install the WSL extension. Um, just click like the blue icon. Uh, which is in the bottom left hand of the screen. Um, so once it's installed, it adds the blue icon, and you can like connect to your WSL. So if you like open VS Code, and then um, go like browse folder, it will like try and open like a Windows folder. But once you click that blue icon and then connect to WSL, you click the um, open folder uh, button. Now it will try and open inside your your Linux. So that is like a list. I have like other projects here, but it's a list um, of all your like files inside the projects folder that I got there on the screen. So inside your WSL um, Ubuntu. Um, so some other options are just like, just being like transparent. Um, yeah, you can run like Windows programs. So you can kind of run like some things. So like the GNOME text editor works like out of the box. Um, I haven't used it, but it works. I've just like seen it work. Um, you can run Sublime, as I said before, but you need to install some like extra library for it to like work. So that's like a display library, I think. Um, but yeah, I haven't really like used it much other than just like, oh yes, it like, it runs. Um, I did have one time where I tried to close, I tried to close it and it was like, can't write temporary file. And I was like a bit confused. <laughs> uh, so anyway, that's just some, you can try other IDEs. Yeah, that might, um, might work. But anyway, if you just do codes where it's at, so, woo. Um, all right. So you can do some like extra, um, uh, highlighting stuff when you're editing, uh, using Visual Studio Code. So that was the biggest thing for me when I moved from Sublime to VS Code, it was like um, my highlighting and stuff's gone. Uh, I need to like reconfigure it again. So how do you do that? So you open VS Code, go to your like file uh, and then preferences and then uh, like settings. And then it's got like a settings file per like environment. Uh, so you have to go um, to the, uh, so this one is like, it's got the, the GUI for the settings. Um, but then yeah, to add all your like, your JSON settings, you need to like get to the settings file. So you go to the WSL tab, um, and then uh, you find some random setting that's like too complex to be edited uh, directly. So you can click the link, open the settings file, and then you can put um, your, your settings in. So this one is just like runs the login script for the WSL. So by default in VS Code, it like just runs the bash without the login like flag. So it won't run any like login scripts uh, if you have any. Um, so that's like how you put it there. I'll put these, there's a GitHub at the end um, with like, examples. Um, that I'll put in there um, so you can refer to it later and the PowerPoint as well. Anyway, so the bash profile uh, file is the one that like, runs when you like, open the terminal. Um, and so, yeah, you might run some scripts like your like git prompt and things, which I'll, I'll go over in a moment. Uh, there's some other like settings. So you probably already know all these. So just like your standard kind of settings, like make sure um, your like, highlighting is there for, for your PHP files, like which files are PHP, which ones like are not and things. Um, you know, make sure you're using like, like spaces instead of tabs, like follow the code standards, you know, delete like extra white space automatically, all that kind of stuff. Um, add the, uh, the dollar sign, like remove the dollar sign from the word separators. 
um, so like when you highlight text, it like highlights a variable. Um, so that's what also goes in the settings file. Um, now for the prompt, uh, so I kind of got these like mixed up, but um, this prompt that you can see here, the, the git bash, bash profile prompt, um, this is like two things you can do in it. You can set your, your prompt so your, like, when it shows up, um, it uh, will have your, your current branch, um, maybe like current date or something, or uh, you know some like the different colors, like what folder you're in, what host name you're using, things like that. Um, and then there's a, I copied this from the Microsoft website. You can share like your SSH agent um, between different like windows of VS Code. Um, so that's what this kind of does. So you get to text agent um, and you can add your like private key. So yeah, anyway, once you have the, um, I'll go back a second, uh, prompt um, added in, you know, it goes from like boring gray to like beautiful green, yellow and, and um, blue. I don't know if it's blue, it might be like yeah. off blue. <laughs> um, yeah, that's like, I took it from like Soul Street, um, but there's other prompts out there you can use as well. Uh, cool. All right, um, so, another, um, so another trick you can use with the, with the Lando, um, so while using WSL, you're also using Lando as well, um, is you can put, you can make your, your Pygmy, your reverse um, proxy, uh, proxy or Lando site as well. So. Lando does have like built-in um, traffic, like the built-in reverse proxy, uh, but uh, you know, you can't, not everything can use the same port. So um, yeah, you can like disable your Pygmy and then run Lando, or you can like, you know, have both at the same time or something, but then different port numbers. Um, so yeah, to do, uh, to have Lando site served by the uh, reverse proxy, um, you can uh, make that happen by adding the environmental variables for the site, um, and then also connecting the Amazon IO um, network uh, through the like compose file. So it says that it's connected through for the, um, the app server, which is like the default um, container that, that runs for your Drupal recipe. Uh, that's got like the Apache and like the CLI and all those kind of things. And then you've got the compose uh, file. So you can't, not that I'm aware of, um, you can't like put your, define the network directly in your Lando file, you need to like put it like externally. It's kind of annoying, but um, that's what the network YAML file is. So um, on this screen, you can see, yeah, it's just like a little tiny file, but um, that's how you put it in there as well. Um, oh, and a pro tip, uh, if you like multiple Lando projects, um, you can do like a Lando local file, and when you run it, it'll like merge the Lando file and the local file together, and that's like your result file, so you can change like the name and things like that. Um, Cool, all right, so xdebug, so obviously we all want to use Lando still, it's great, probably everyone already knows this, but um, if you don't use, um, uh, you probably everyone knows how to debug, but if you want to use uh, WSL, you probably want to still want to know how to do that. So you can just do like xdebug true, like, like it works straight away, perfect, but it's a bit slow, um, like if you're not like actively debugging. Um, so another way is um, you can set the files and then add in your flags like manually, for your xdebug, and then use like tooling. So um, yeah, I think Bryn uh, showed like custom drush commands, so you can also add like other commands, and this one's um, xdebug on, xdebug off, so you can have it off by, the, by default, and then uh, yeah, you can later like turn it on and it'll like reload the server, um, so it's, it's great. Uh, there's an example there of like the link is like where I copied that from. Um, yeah, and this is assuming you're using Apache for your Docker container, but um, uh, there's like some example on the internet if you're using like Nginx in your Docker container. Um, so yeah, so usually when you're using Xbug, you need like some flag to like trigger it. So you need like Xbug um, session start, um, or like you set it in your uh, in your command line when you're running your like your file. Um, but if you want to run it like all the time, then you need to like inject like PHP file, and this is what this um, uh, PHP extra overrides. Um, X debug in years. Um, and that's through like the config config uh, feature, not config feature, two configs. It confused me too. Um, but the config PHP is for the version, but config config PHP is for the extra file. Um, and that's how you uh, you set the start with request. So it might be useful for like Ajax or something, you know, you might always like, you know, you can't make Drupal add the XDBug flag all the time. So that's, uh, that's useful. 
Um, how do you um, make uh, VS Code connect to that? So once you set all the, the settings up, uh, then you just go add like a configuration. So you go run add configuration. Um, and then you put some like JSON file in here, which just like tells it what to look for. Probably the, the key thing is because um, Xbox 3, we're using like nine port 9003, uh, um, not Xbox 2, which is like for the older PS3 versions. Uh, the show hidden, it's like show extra variables, um, and then the app. So forward slash app is like where your um, your project is at. That's like default. Um, everything under your like dot lando file is like mapped to your forward slash app in your in your container. Um, but you can like override that to you know to put app like somewhere else. Um, but yeah, assuming that you're like using default setup, that's kind of where the, the path mapping uh, looks um, like. Um, where's my next slide? Here we go. Oh yes, um, yeah. So you just run it, and then there is like a debug um, tab. I didn't put in the photo, but it's just below the file, like the two like paper um, thingies on the on the menu, um, and it just like drops into that automatically whenever it um, uh, receives a request from the PHP to um, to run the uh, Dex debug. Um, so another trick uh, is also like the SQL file import um, process progress. Um, I forgot to like trim this this one down, but uh, essentially, um, I think Lando will like add a progress bar. I think based on the file size. But if it, what if it's like a smallish file and like your computer's running a bit slow and you just like want to see the progress? So one way is um, using the PV tool. Um, so this is just some like fancy if statement to like install PV and see if it's not installed already. But you could just like run it like by itself. But if you do like Lando rebuild and you don't have internet. Then you get some error, it's kind of annoying, so that's why I add like if statement. Um, yeah, so yeah, so install PV, and then um, you do some commands similar to this. Um, these are also on the GovCMS uh, all in one developer guide as well. Um, but yeah, you can, this is one way you can do it. Uh, you can assign the path to some variable, SQL file, compute the, the size in bytes, um, and then you pipe it um, into the, the Lando service. Um, so the size variable gets uh, replaced automatically, but the SQL database um, needs to be escaped. Sorry. Uh, yeah. Oh, thanks. Um, yeah, I do like technical talks, so it's it's great. Um, yeah. Anyway, and so we want the SQL database to be escaped uh, inside the container, so that's where we um, escape it with the backslash. Um, but usually, SQL database is uh, Drupal nine or ten or whatever your recipe name is. Um, yeah, Google progress bar, so it's great all the time. Um, cool, and then yeah, that's the GitHub at the end. So it's got the, the slides there. I'll add like the code later. Um, but uh, yeah, um, any any questions? Thank you.